Hello again, welcome everybody um, back to my channel. Um, this is part three of the uh, Parisian Dolls House. I um, hope you enjoy um, if you're watching. Um, before we start at all, there's just a couple of people I would love to say hello to before I forget. I'd like to say hello to Coffee Cat TV. So if you're watching Coffee, um, then uh, welcome to you. Thank you very much for subscribing. And also, uh, um, Gretchen Gallo. So Gretchen, I love that name. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> Welcome Gretchen. Thank you very very much for subscribing and I hope you like all the videos that have been and the videos that are to come. Um, right, I'll uh, stop here. I've just started uh, putting the templates in the room here um, just to show you before I finish cutting them just to show you how I actually fit them in um, and then I'll go from there on to probably I'll decorate quite a few rooms and then show you it all done okay okay folks right um, I apologize for the shaky camera I'm holding the tablet in one hand and trying to point with the other so on this side if you can see I've just used two pieces of A4 paper one piece I've just creased into the back of the wall there so it's about half an inch into the back and then I've joined it somewhere about there and all you do is slide the two bits of paper together and apart until you get the, to the other edge of the room there. And then wherever they're overlapping, just put a bit of tape on and hold that. Uh, the top bit, if I show you, you can see in the room there where it's gone to the back of the wall. I've done the same that side. There's two pieces there, just overlapped and taped and into the back. And then the back bit there, I haven't uh, cut this paper yet, but I'll put that up and show you so that goes from side to side whoops side to side and it's joined there somewhere so that's two pieces and then you could crease them up at the ceiling there whoops let me take that bit out crease it along the ceiling there and then take it out and fold that down and then cut that piece and then you've got the exact rectangle for the for the back of the room so i'll just cut along there fold it cut and then that'll be ready to fit the cut the wallpaper to these sizes and then put them up and I'll do the same as I did with every room put both the side walls in first of all where the overlaps in the back and then the back panel so let's get the rest of the rooms paint uh, decorated okay so this is one of the side walls in the um, hallway in the narrow hallway down the middle of the, the building um, and this is where the door would go um, so I had cut this whole piece first of all to get a template so I know it's this size I've left an extra bit on the end there to curl around to the back of the wall um, but I like um, when I'm thinking of these sort of things um, I love uh, jigsaws I love doing jigsaws all the time and um, well I don't have time to do them all the time but I do I have grown up doing jigsaws and I love the idea of fitting things in better um, to, to, to make everything neater and each time you cut a template like this you waste this bit of fab uh, bit of material unless you have something smaller to, to cover use to uh, cover it with it um, but I just thought on this case what I've done for the side walls is to lay this in one corner of the paper to use up you know so there's no space around it and then what I'm going to do is fold this over like so and then I'm going to cut that rectangle out and then so that there will be a tiny join there but you won't see it anyway um, we'll match it up and then this piece here that's left on top I will just lift this up and put it across the top here and down the side of the new cut there so it doesn't take up this much more paper this will actually move right up to there and a bit higher up and then we'll have all this bit of paper spare without a big piece with a hole in it okay I'll show you what I mean anyway in a minute okay so there we have the, the doorway cut out and these two bits the pattern actually meets exactly so there'll be no weird gap in the join at all and this is how it would have been laid out if it was cut in one piece so all this uh, paper here and up to here will all be uh, wasted well not wasted but it would all be this would all be wasted in the middle so doing it in two pieces it just takes out this piece here so you just have all of this left and when you're spending a lot on 
this kind of paper um, compared to papers you can buy for one pound a sheet and things like that. Um, when it's three, four or five euros a sheet, it makes all, and you're paying, I don't know, nine pound, ten pound for shipping all the way from Spain on top of your paper. Um, it works out more expensive. So that was my choice. That's what I could afford at the time and I want this to look really nice. But I'm saving all this paper to finish off the rest of the haul um, without having to buy extra sheets of paper. Okay, so here we have uh, what we've got here, the bathroom, all papered. Lovely border along the top there. And the hallway, nice grey, neutral colour. A uh, workroom, there we are. And I've, I did end up wallpapering all the ceilings. Well, you can't see them very well in this video. Um, there's the bedroom, hurrah. Another hallway on the first floor. And the lounge with a nice border on the paper there. Really like that, lovely. And then we come down to the ground floor and we have the, the shop. There we are. So the next thing, um, I've ordered flooring, um, wooden flooring which I'm going to pull apart and then remake myself because it looks more authentic looking. So that sh I'll, I'll order that uh, today. That should be with us in a few days. Um, but next I think I'm going to sort out the lighting and I have bought loads of lights. Well, collected them over the years really in between some I got recently, some I've already had. Um, so that's all this jumble here. I'm going to start sorting that out. And here's the copper wire here I'm going to start wiring the uh, back of the dollhouse so let's get on to that bit next folks okay before I show you it properly uh, the right way up the house as you can see is upside down there's the chimneys um, this is the easiest way I've found to paper the ceilings which I'm going to do now so I'm just cut the templates out and glue those on uh, I don't know how many rooms I'm doing I might well uh, might put some paper on all the ceilings and um, but I'll get that glued and then we'll turn it up the right way and let's see what it looks like right so I've just rushed in, I haven't rushed at all I've just stepped from the conservatory into the kitchen here's John say hi everyone hello, hello everyone hello hello, hello. Um, this is one of John's houses he's working on um, he's doing like an upstairs downstairs type house so there's a he's just been wallpapering and we've Still got the floors to do, some of them. There's a nursery, an attic. I can't wait to see that, it looks fab. And then other rooms. Oh, let's see. Oh, fancy schmancy lights. I like those. Um, there we are. There's there's a dining room, I think. Is there a lounge? Um dining room, lounge. a lounge, and a music room. Music room down there. Yeah. But, yes. And that's gonna get another floor in on, isn't it? Yes. And oh, another chandelier, and what's this one? Ooh, I like, and these, I like those as well. What room are they going in? They're going to go in the main hall at the bottom. Ooh, oh, lovely. In love there. Great, hopefully green ones going in these two rooms. Green lights in there as well. And I've got and another floor. There's another the floor, there's a basement, so this whole structure will sit on top, which is the same as like my French Parisian house I'm doing on this video. That's got a separate floor below which I shall add on later. Anyway, let's get back to back to my house. Right, back out into the conservatory. I've just started, I don't know how you can see it, but I've just started drawing out the lines and more, uh, putting the copper tape in. Um, so uh, this is where I've started. I've just do two lines from the bottom there and run them right along there because there's, there's various holes um, to join up lights to. And that's where I've put the um, the connector at the beginning that's got wire wire feet in there so when you screw it to the the, the dollhouse um, it connects to these and then you put the wires to the plug in these this adapter here uh, not adapter this connector um, I just wanted to show you when I've when where these are two wires here you can't have any wire copper wire crossing on top of another wire because it will just join the two up You've got to keep two lines separate at all times and to do that I run these along here this one i have wel uh, welded soldered onto here going up and this one here is going to go from this line 
but I've put a bit of uh, insulation tape on there and I'll just run the copper tape over that. I'll show you it when it's done and then that won't connect to the one going across. So at all times just keep the two parallel lines um, separate from each other. Um, what I do do is, uh, hang on, I'll turn this round and I can tell you what I'm, what I'm doing. Okay, now before we, before we carry on, um, I was just going to tell you what I've done next, but I have stopped just really quickly. Um, I've got some more of you lovelies to say hello to, because while I'm doing the video, other people have been subscribing. Um, so, and I don't want to miss you out. So first of all, um, I want to say hello to Nuss1E. Looking at it, I'm going to call you Nuzzle. Maybe that's what you're aiming for. If you are, it's worked. Welcome, Nuzzle, <laughs> to the gang. Um, also, um, uh, Yvette Dowell. Yvette, hello to you. Welcome to our gang. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Um, also to Kathy Blount. Um, Kathy, um, I know you've been buying uh, some vases off me. Um, you're in the in the UK in Leicester, I think. I don't know. I think I'm. I think you are. But hello to you, if I remember correctly, Kathy. And thank you very, very, very much for buying vases from me. Um, I know you've got a project going on, and you're also going to make a, um, I think a um, a garden shop that closed down near you, and I think you're recreating that at some point in the future so you will be uh, looking for more vases which is wonderful hopefully i can make some lovely ones for you um also want to say hello to ahmad al Saad. ahmad uh, welcome to you too thank you very very much for joining the, the the family um and also oh uh jeffrey and hazel um jeffrey and hazel they are from uh, teeny weeny world um, based in Hythe, down on the, the Kent coast. Um, I think I've got your took your business card because John and me visited you the other day. If so, I shall put your card here and show everybody. Um, people in the UK, if you live anywhere near there, well, we don't, but if uh, so if you don't, then travel to them. Um, a lovely little shop. It's actually in two little sections in uh, a place called the Maltins. Um, a big old stone building that, you, that, that used to be the Maltins um, and it was fantastic we had a really good day uh, down there and we spent hours with you and bought loads and some of it will be going into the house because I was shopping for the Parisian uh, house so uh, so hurrah so some some of your stuff will go in there um, but yes welcome to you Jeffrey and Hazel if you're watching um, and also, oh, and lastly, I want to say um, in one of my other videos, I had um, uh, given away one of my bags that I made, uh, my, one of my handbags. Um, I wasn't quite happy with it and with the zip, although it still worked perfectly, but I just gave it away uh, to whoever wanted it. Um, and the lovely Rachel down in Torquay uh, won the bag, so I, uh, we posted it off to her. Um, and she absolutely loves it. Hurrah! I hope you're. I hope you're going to use it and and just just make use out of it. It's the only one like it in the world. I never make any two the same. So if anyone asks you, it is unique. Um, but also I had mentioned on one of my videos when I was uh, showing different vases that I'd made that I made a little um, vase. I called it my Van Gogh sunflower vase. If I remember, I'll put another picture here just to remind folks. Um, and I absolutely loved it, but be, I can't really keep my work. Um, I have to sell it. Uh, it's my living. So it went on to Etsy for sale. Um, and at one point, the uh, little ping cash register sound came on my phone. And I looked and I had sold the Van Gogh sunflower vase. So I was uh, I was sad to see it go, really, although I'm, it's, it's not mine. It's for sale. Um, but happy that it had been sold and somebody else had liked it as well. And then when I went in to see who had got it and who had bought it and where to post it to, it was indeed your lovely self, Rachel, who had bought it um, and then sent a message to me to say, um, I have bought the vase for you as a gift. So she bought the vase that I made 
for me as a gift as a gift <laughs> sorry i'm getting all choked up again um uh, that has never ever happened to me before um and it might sound weird to a few people you know i could have just kept it but i can't afford to because that's yeah, that's the way life goes um so i'm sometimes really really sad letting some of my work go um but as i say it has to be um but i can't believe um you um rachel decided to buy it for me as a gift um after i'd sent you the sent you your your bag so there are some nice kind people in the world and it's proven over and over again on my youtube channel with lots of lovely people i'm thinking of a few of you right now um i won't waste more time going into your names again but you know who you are and you i know you're watching so right Let's um, pause this and I have been drilling holes, little holes with my little little mini tool here um, to do the wiring in the back um, and I'll just pause and then I'll tell you how I go about where I put the holes in the wall. Right, I'll just tell you quickly um, what I've done, how I've worked out where to drill holes for the lights and everything in the rooms. Um, Fortunately, it might not be the same way with you. You might buy a house and want to wire it completely and put lights in before you've even bought furniture. But the problem with that is if you're going to put table lamps in rooms or wall lights on the back wall, but you might have furniture, bookcases and things, you, you might not know exactly where to put them. So if you, you, you know, so what I do um, is I've had the house now, I can't remember a year, or a year and a half or something. And over that time, um, because I know what I want to do with it, I've just been gradually buying um, bits of furniture and things and decor. So what I did was to set out, I just roughly put in the furniture more or less where I wanted it in each room, first of all, and then worked out where I wanted lamps on tables and things. And then the closest area from there to the wall is where I marked it to drill the holes. And even when I put units in, in up in different rooms, um, beside that, I wanted to make sure there was a hole for the um, to put the wall light on. If I had done it maybe right in the center, then I wouldn't be able to fit that unit in that I'd already bought. So it depends which way around you want to do it. Um, but I. As I say, I had the furniture first, so it's worth putting that in and then looking around to see where you can actually physically put holes in the in the back walls or even in the sides. If you put them in the sides and put lights on the sides, you'd have to do that before you coat the outside of the wall um, because your cables are going to run down the side. So I, if I was going to have lights on the side, I would have done that first, run the cables round to the back and then covered this with you know, what I've done with this brickwork. But as it is, they're all on the back or their table lamps in the room. So I'll just carry on. I'll finish this tape. The copper tape that you put on, um, what I'm doing is before I join a bit onto another bit, I put a bit of solder on that copper wire on its, on its own. Then I get the other tape and stick that onto it. And then I do another blob of copper uh, uh, solder on top of that to give it a good connection. If you just stick the tapes together, like so, uh, without uh, soldering them, then sometimes you don't get a very good join. Um, and also, once I've uh, put all this on, I'm then going to wire one light at a time and then connect it to the connector and make sure that light comes on. Fine. Then I'll add another light and make sure that one's working and I'll do them gradually because if you set the, if you wire the whole thing, switch it on, there's a light not working or whatever you can't work out where the jo which join is not connected if you know what I mean so if you do it gradually then you can see where the first fault arises if there are any right let's get on okay so here we have the finished layout so the uh, copper strips they don't have to join up into a circuit or anything they just end where they end and the, the best thing really is to have as little uh, lengths of strips as possible. Um, so, you you know, don't put them literally everywhere. You can sort of pull wires over to them um, so you don't have too many. 
because um, the more cop the more joins you make, the more chances the of, uh, of the circuits not working. Um, but that's where I've got my lights all around the house. That's the the least I could uh, could do really. Just one along the bottom, one up the side, and three arms going out there, and that one there. And as I say, I've written on every on each one, so I now know by looking at the wires at the back um, exactly what wire that is. And if there's a light, if the first floor hall ceiling light isn't working, then I just come around the back, look at all these wires, and I know it's this one here that it, that it's at fault. Um, so. And if we go around the, the front here, I've got all my work gear in here. It's like workman's tools in the house. And there's the transformer. Um, but anyway, there's the, the lights up now. There's one on the back wall there, Tiffany light there. We've got hall lights, one on the wall and a hanging one. And the workroom has uh, lights in at the back as well. And then the, the lounge. There's, I need to stick, the, Put some glue on and stick the rose up on the ceiling there um, and then there's the hall light again there's the bedroom and there's i've stuck that one it's looking quite nice i think and then if we come down to the shop here we've got the lovely chandeliers with the ceiling roses one there another one there so i think there's six lights so, so there's 12 bulbs there all together um, plus another wall light there, which will be going up the stairs. And down here we've plugged in, um, there's two uh, lamps there, a standard lamp and a table lamp. And they're po posed where, or positioned where, there's going to be furniture or where I want the, the, where it want, want the uh, standard lamp to be. Um, and over there we have a, um, an extension cable there. So I can plug a lamp in with a short lead and I can put it on the counter which will be somewhere here and then this this will uh, be down behind the counter. So that's that bit. Right, um, if you're, some of you that are watching may be just starting out doing dollhouses, some of you aren't doing dollhouses at all. Um, but if you are just starting out and you like knowing as much as possible it would the videos would be far too long to say everything that I've even learned and I've only learned part of, 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 of you know I don't have all knowledge um, but just things that I have learned first of all when you buy lights and you take them out of the pack um, test them first of all to make sure they work so if I um, I've got the um, this is plugged into the mains now but it's a transformer so it's just a 12 volt battery so if I touch the wires, both of them onto there, um, and then hopefully you'll see that the light, yep, the light does come on. Anyway, it's hard to hold it and with the camera and everything, but that light works, so that's fine. So we can lay that down safely. So make sure they work. Another thing is these ones that um, are hanging from the ceiling, um, I won't keep putting it backwards and forwards. I should have done this first of all um, to show you. Um, but this is, it was too long. It's actually been painted sort of gold there to try and uh, cover up the, 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 the wire. But this was actually right in the fitting. So this was a lot longer hanging down. And as you can see, the chain is really baggy now. So I've pulled it up depending on the, the height of my ceiling and where it looks right in the, in the room. So I've just shortened it. Um, by pulling the wire sh uh, shorter there and then I'm just going to get some pliers that's just very very soft metal and it's got a, a break in the ring there um, so you can do it at the top or the bottom I'm just going to pull that chain out shorten the chain cut a bit off and just put one of the links back on the, 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 the loop again and that will put it back to um, we'll just hold it nice and keep the chain straight so it will look like uh, it's meant to be that length and then that obviously this bit here is going to go um, th uh, through the roof onto the next floor and I'm going to lay it in the groove in the floor above and then the flooring will come down on top of that to cover the wiring. There we are, you can see that's shorter now. I um, don't know where the other bit of chain has gone. Um, you can actually use a pair of craft scissors 
and when you've undone when you've pulled the chain out of the loop there you can cut the chain um, with a pair of old craft scissors you don't have to have pliers and then I just put it back through the, the, the big hoop there and then squash the hoop back together again and then that's the new so it's that much shorter you can see that bit there was in there so it was that much longer so I've uh, shortened that shortened the chain you will never know right okay um, just another thing for you newbies out there if you're just setting off um, in your doll house journey um, when you take the lights out of the package and you've tested them you've, you've put the wires on there to make sure the, the lights work which we have done they all all your lights will come with a plug on the end um, leave the leave the cable long because this is going to go into the center of the building and then work its way back to the outside to the back of the building so just cut the plug off because you can't thread that through a tiny hole in the wall just cut the plug off like that and then you could you'll end up with tons of these so you you can end up throwing them after a while because they're you'll you'll find you'll have a box and you'll start collecting things and after a while you'll have a clear out but save them in the beginning um, so you've got that so you can thread that through the back of the, 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 the house so it comes out the back and then you're going to part the two wires bare them and then you're going to solder them onto the back of the copper so that's that's how you're going to fix them to your your house things like table lamps um, that you want and they're sort of in the room somewhere um, you can either, if you if you know where your table lamp is going to sit, you can either cut the cable like this, bring this down to the floor behind the unit, and then along the flooring, like along the skirting board, um, before you lay the skirting perhaps, um, and then that can go out the back. Or you can, uh, let me just get another piece for you. Okay, this, this is what I mean about boxes of um, lights. These are out of other houses. We can recycle them. We can do whatever with them. Um, but there's, I won't, can't undo the whole thing. But here there's an extension plug. So it's like having a real extension cable in your house. So you could um, just cut that to the length you want. And that can go out the back of the, some of the house and attach so that this, this bit here is live. And then your actual light lamp fitting itself, um, you can just shorten the cable on that uh, plug and then just plug it straight into here. So, so you've got your, your lamp, you've got the plug and you just plug it in and that would, that would plug in inside your, um, like so that would plug in in the, in the building itself. So you can join them either way, depending. With doing it this way, you can, if you want, uh, oh, I've got one here. You can get extension cables with that would that would hold three lights. So you would just pull the wire out, cut that, put that through the back of the house, and this would be lying down on your floor in the room somewhere. You'd have furniture or something um, to hide it. And then you can have other lamps going to that and plugging them in. So you can do it either way. And the plugs themselves, um, if I get if I get one of the plugs, but I'll cut them off. Um, they're not fixed to anything, you can just pull them apart. So where these prongs are, you can just get pliers and they just come straight out. Just pull those out. Pull, pull that one off and then you can see, if I can do something here to show you. You can see there that the wires just go straight into the each socket there so if i poke those out get that one there that one there i don't know if you can see that probably can't that's the the end of the wire if i pull it out did that help so your actual other end of your wire you're just bearing two bits of the wire bringing it down to, to the end of your plug and getting those prongs, just pick those up, uh, that side, oh, 
that one's just gone across the room somewhere. I'm using the wrong thing. I should be using some little pliers or something. But you would get hold of the prong, push the wire back down towards the hole on each side, and then poke that prong back in again, like so. So it's just keeping the wire connected to these bits of metal. So you can make that any length you want and then just refix your plug if you want to. Right, let's move on. I've nearly, I've nearly put all the, light, the lights in place and all the wires are coming out the back. And then I'll sit and cut them to the right length, maybe leave some distance on any of them in case I want to ever move the light to change a bulb and then put it back again. So you'll work that out as you, as you go along. Okay, now if I can just show you the look, it was the bedroom light I was talking about. Um, so I've, I've drilled a hole in the ceiling there. I've pulled the, put the cord through and pulled it up to the ceiling. I've got a sticky pad there that you can take off. Sometimes they're not that great. So sometimes you can use double-sided sticky tape as well, or some tacky wax or something like that. So I've pulled that up through the ceiling and this, this room up here is the bathroom. So this is now the floor of the bathroom. And I've used a, a round-headed Dremel um, just to cut uh, a groove along there um, and then thread this up. I've done a hole out the back there so it goes out the back of the house. And then this cable here, if I can, I'll just push that down with my fingers all the way along and get that flat in there. And then I'm going to lay the flooring down on top of that. So you can see that that's all in, in the groove there, flat. If you do, if you don't, if you just run it along the floor, then if you're doing a hardwood flooring, you can probably cover over it. But if you're doing dollhouse carpet, which is very thin, or other kind of uh, coating flooring, then it may bump up uh, on there and it may show. So this just covers it completely and you'll have a completely flat floor when finished. And if we go around the, around the back here, you can see that was the bedrooms, and I've marked it there. You can see bedroom ceiling cable coming out. Um, also, what I do to join the wire, I'll now, when I go to join these wires, I'll just cut this off about this length and then part the wires. And then you always put one on one side and one on the other. Um, there's a tons of questions I had when I was learning and, and answers I needed to find, so I can't list everything. But just in case anyone's wondering, there's no positive and negative on the uh, electrics on a 12 volt uh, circuit. So you just bear the wire, part the wires, bear them, and stick one on one and one on the other. And to do that, instead of putting the wire to the copper tape and then trying to use solder as well and hold a soldering iron, what you do, or what I do, is just put a blob of solder on the copper near where the holes are bear the wires and then when you've done that uh, just say you've got the two wires bare there you just hold one one wire with one hand onto there put the cop hold the soldering iron with the other hand and just dab it and it glues and then the other one just hold it there and dab it and it will and it will stick to the solder so I think I've done oh, I've done one there to show you and this quite secure and each time you fix one, then just go around, plug it in and go around and make sure that light's working. So we know where the fault is, if there is a fault. Right, okay, so I have decided, let me just get for you. Um, I have decided in my stash, um, I forgot I'd bought them, probably about a year, two years ago. I bought some ceiling roses, they're just plaster. Um, so I'm going to put four of those in different rooms, two in the shop, one in the bedroom, one in the lounge. Just make it more fancy on the ceiling. I also have here, just so you can see what it is, um, Treasure Gold, the original. I'll just hold that up there so you can see what that is. It's a non-tarnishing wax gilt, um, so it'll just stay as is. And there's different things. Um, serving suggestions for you. you can put it on furniture, lighting, anything you want. So I'll take that out. It's not, it's not cheap, but and it's only a small jar. But literally, a small jar goes a long way. I'll probably have this for years, literally years. So, and you can get different uh, colours as well. 
This one is um, classic, uh, that I've got, just a classic one. And all you do is just dab some, I gave it a little stir as well, just to, just to mix it up again. And then just rub it, rub it with your fingers, I don't know if I can show you this. And just rub it lightly over the top of the relief and that starts bringing that out. So just dab a bit more on, if I can show you. I should be watching myself properly doing this instead of holding it at a silly angle, but there you go. Yeah. And you can rub on as much as you want or as little as you want. So there we are. That's just brought out all the pattern, all the all the relief in the in the thing. So when they're up on the ceiling and you and you look up into the room it will just with the lights on as well, um it will uh gold finger there's only so many times you can do that joke when you've got this on your fingers before it just ain't funny. Right, let's get cleaned up. Okay, folks, um, I'm going to end this video here. Um, I've done it in, I don't know, 15 or so different shots over uh, how, so much time. I'll edit it down. Hopefully it's about half an hour or so long. I don't like to make them too long. I don't want to bore you. Um, but excitement, um, our flooring has just arrived, yay! I want to add this onto this video because I just want to get going with it. Um, but I am going to, the day's getting on, I'm going to leave it. I will start another video first thing tomorrow morning for you lovelies. <laughs> because that's what I like doing and I'm that kind of guy. Um, but yes, flooring has turned up. I won't go into it and start telling you. Uh, uh, stuff but I'm going to tell you how I'm going to use it um, and uh, but anyway I'll uh, oh it's too exciting um, anyway we're not going to cut it and just lay it how it is on this on the sticky back there but I shall tell you that on the next video I'm going to make it look much better okay then thanks very much for watching folks for the wallpaper session and the lighting session I'm so pleased um, can't wait to get them all connected at the back and see them all lit up and you will see them soon. Maybe in the next video when I do the flooring as well. Uh, maybe I'll just connect the uh, all the lights up and uh, show you them on. Because once the flooring is laid, I can then lay the skirting boards. Um, what are they called in America, in the US or Canada? Skirting boards, the bits around the edge on the floor. Is it the same word? I don't know. This is where I say who knows, who cares. But I do. I often say who knows, who cares, just for the sake of it. But I often care, as you must know by now, my lovelies. Okay, um, I'll just put it here one minute. Oh. Didn't want to knock my tea over while I was moving the house around for you. Cheers. Oh. Lovely. Nectar. Okay, I'll speak to you again soon, my lovelies. I will uh, wait till tomorrow. I will um, change my shirt. It's very hot today. I'll even, I'll even look hot. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> Temperature-wise. Oh, my God. Go away. Go and do something. Come back and see me next time. Love you. Bye.